if you need to line up your effects to a certain thing, like applause for you know people applauding, twirl down, twirl down again, waveform. Now you can see where the sound waves come in for that effect, okay? So this way, let's say we want them to happen right here as the flowers are being thrown. I would slide that over there so I can see where the, uh, that happens. Make sense to you? And based upon the level right here, you could make it louder or quieter by changing the decibel. Like that, okay? Yeah, thank you. I, I figured it fit the animation perfectly. So that was twirl down until you get the waveform. Then you can see your waveform and you could adjust the volume here. You could also keyframe the volume if you need to fade it on or fade it off. Everyone good with that? That was the first thing. Second thing, how to render. Here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is while I'm talking, I'm gonna open up Media Encoder. Media Encoder takes a couple minutes to open and nobody likes that, so I'm gonna start it now. So I open Media Encoder and I'll have a long white beard before it pops open. So now I'm gonna show you the rendering process. Step one, make sure you have the sequence you wanna render open. Step two, make sure your render bars are covering the full amount that you want to render. So you got the sequence open, you checked your render bars, made sure your audio is right, you made sure all the things you want visible have the eyeball clicked on, all the things you want invisible have the eyeball clicked off. So we go composition, add to render queue, not media encoder, composition, add to render queue. So I click that, there's the render queue. So step one, I leave high quality alone. Okay, I don't click on that, that's fine. Step two, I click on output two, this blue text. I click on that, and I call it whatever I wanna name it and where I want it to go. So if I want to go to the desktop, I'd click desktop and I'd name it up here. Awesome render tutorial because I am modest. Right there, it's saved. And then I would just hit render and let it render out. Now this might take a moment just because I did the whole uh, animation. Was everyone able to get that? So once this is done rendering, and it's showing me it's on frame 50 of 82, it gives you an estimate of how much time is left in your render. And it's all done. So I can just click here, hit delete, to delete it out of there. Now, Media Encoder is open for me because I opened it, you know, before I did that render. When you render, After Effects is going to give you an MOV file. It's going to be very large and it's going to take a while to upload. So you could always do this. With Media Encoder open, click this plus button right there. This is where we're going to choose our movie that we just rendered. Let's see, where did I put mine? right here. So I hit open. And here's the settings you're going to want. H.264, high bit rate, and always check to see where it's going to be saved to. And if you want to rename it, you can. And then you click the green arrow, green play button when you're ready. And do you see how quick that was? It's always faster to compress and change the file format than to go through all the math of rendering in After Effects. So it is worth it for that extra step. H.264 files can be played on Mac and PC. MOVs cannot be played on every machine. So it's when you're submitting to something, usually an H.264 is pretty good. Uh, MOVs, you would really only do if you wanted uncompressed, high quality movie file format. Like if it's gonna be on a big projector, MOV. No problem at all. Thank you for reminding me about me keeping my word. All right, now let's look at those particles. So we did for lab directional and they're all facing the same way because of that. So we're going to tweak that particle system. So I clicked on the particle layer and my effects controls, there's the particle system, all right? Now, since I want to experiment with this, I'm going to command D duplicate my particle system. 
and I'm going to hide the original. This way, I could always go back to it. I could also duplicate the particle layer. Both work. Okay. So here's the new particle system. I'm going to go to my physics engine. We've already got the particle. We've already got the size. I'm going to change it off of direction axis. I'm going to try, let's try explosive. And what we can do is actually, let's hit reset. We'll start all over. There's explosive, all right? Do you see how it's spreading out like that? So we'll try our extra and the effect camera first. Let's try, nope. Nope. Yep, okay, that's going towards us. See how it's going towards us? So we'll go in the opposite direction. Now it's going away from us. That was rotation Y, X, rotation X. I did positive 90. Let me try fire. Now, I'm going to try fractal omni just for the fun of it. Just that a little bit. Let's see. Grab it. I'm going to rotate it down to the stage a little bit more. See that? Yeah. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we, we basically have the motion looking pretty decent. Yeah. And here's the tweaking I did to it. Put that up for a second. I chose Fractal Omni 1.19 for my velocity, 1.18 for my gravity. Didn't adjust the resistance yet. And then for my X rotation for effect camera, I did positive 77 degrees. So let's put in our particle now. Okay, we're good. Are you good? All right. All right. So for the particle, I'm going to do I'm going to do textured disc this time because textured square, they're all facing the same way. I'm going to do textured disc so that they're facing different directions right off the bat. Hmm? I'll that. Yeah. And here, the flower should already be in here. Yeah, it's rose. So I choose that layer, number eight rose for me. Effects mask. And uh, I'm going to solo this just so we can see it a little bit better. All right, now, birth size. They're gonna stay the same size because they don't shrink or grow. So I'm gonna do, let's try two for each. Ah, that's way too big. I'll do 1.2. And right off the bat, are these going in the right direction? Looks like they're going towards us. Let's try. There we go. That's a little better. Let's play around that angle a little more. That's definitely towards us now. There, that's good. I did 62 okay. for the X, yeah. All right, I'm kind of happy with the size and look how they're already, there's more variation to them than they were before. Yeah. Like, here's the difference. See that, they're all going the same way. 
Whereas right here, this is already far better. So we sort of have the look we want. Now let's work on the producer. They're, I need to move them away. Oops, not that way. It's a little better. Now it's increased the radius. Like that. So let's cut down the number of them. Have them live longer. And that's the first part of it. Let's do even less. I love the um Oh, this thing? Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. In my effect camera, I did 62. Wow. And I could try like here, like 67 is pretty decent too. Oh, okay, because it's like straight up. Yes, yeah, so just mess around with that angle. You good so far? Okay. Yeah. All right. So last thing we got to do is set up the floor. That's under physics floor. And we did glue because they wouldn't slide. Now the floor position, let's turn back on your scene and see where it looks about right. Let's try right about there. That's looking a bit better. See how they're in all different directions? Yeah. Now these right here are like floating around. So I'm going to move that floor even more. See now they're hitting the ground better. Yeah. I'm liking that. And they're getting more altitude as they're being thrown too. And some are landing in the light and out of the light. Yeah. All right, and I'll give you this for reference. So you can see how just trying a different physics engine gave us a completely different look to it. Yeah. Is that, is that, <laughs> that, that was the one thing I wanted to, you to tweak. Um, you could always go under your guides and grid to hide that if it's distracting you so you can check out your compositing better. And that's looking good. That's looking pretty solid. So. Nice job. Can you get a chance to make your input on something? Mm hmm One second. I made a new fo a new folder. So if you go it also be in the screen recording. So if you go files, art two two eight virtual. Uh, and then I made fall twenty twenty two AE files. These are the ones I was making during the lectures. So you could always just access them all here. So, you know, that's that's it. Um, this is an example of faking a uh, vignette. And I'm gonna drop down the resolution just so it opens faster. All right, so we've got some nice gradation all around. And one of the things I was suggesting was adding some vignetting to this, okay? So the fast way of doing that, we'll just go layer, I'm going to go layer, new, solid. And I'll call it vignette. And we'll make it black. And hit OK. So you good so far? We just threw a solid black. Um. Well, see, if we do tones, you could always blend it with the actual background color. 
You know what I mean? That's why I just work off the values of light and dark. And then you, you got blending modes at your disposal. If we did an alpha mat, we'd have hard edges. If we do a mask, then we can expand and contract the mask as well as feather it. So we got more flexibility just by drawing that initial shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with the mask and to make a mask, you've gotta have something selected. Otherwise you're gonna create a shape layer. So we got our vignette selected. I'm going to grab an ellipse and I'm just gonna say like roughly about the size of your logo. Like around there. You good? Okay. These just so I can see what's going on. All right, perfect. So M, mask is already here. That's M. Now I can hit, instead of add, I'm gonna choose subtract, okay? Oh, and I moved the whole layer. Wait, let me undo that. So I'm going to redraw my mask a little better. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. So instead of add, I'm gonna choose subtract. So it's showing me just your logo. All right, you good? Now I'm gonna hit F for feather. I'm gonna really crank that up. Look already, look at how much more depth that gave us. Now, I'm lazy. I wanna push that a little bit more away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reopen all of my mask and I can say, expand is gonna push it a little bit further away. Give me even more breathing room. See where we're going with this? So I like eyeballed it. That's why the mask gave me that extra level of flexibility where I can get fast, quick looks. So I expanded it, pushed it a little bit more away and I feathered it. I can increase the feather more if I want to dial in how much depth we're adding. You could also say what layer this vignette will be above or below. Like if I wanna keep the logo unaffected, I could put it, just watch your alpha mats. I could put it right above the background solid, okay? okay. And then there's your color mood. Like I could try luminosity. So if this was like red, there'd be tones of red underneath. And then another thing I could do is I could hit T for opacity and fade it out a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle. So you see how just that extra little thing adds a little bit more power to it? All right, cool. Um, yeah, that was just a fast way of making a vignette. And you know, you don't even need to be that severe. Just even something subtle adds that. Yeah, I mean, because you had so much nice shading that once you've got a solid tone, it makes it jump out. We're gonna recreate the jazz hands. Bum, bum, bum. This is easy. This is this is three seconds of work. So first, we're gonna decide where the jazz hands come in. And right here, because the, the arms come up, you already have the motion there. So we're gonna start them right around here. So this involves two things. One, setting up the rotation expression with wiggle, which is easy, and then parenting the wiggle to a slider controller so it's only wiggling when we want it to, okay? So, I'm assuming it's buried inside of your rig. I don't want to dive through your whole layer structure, so I'm just gonna click inside my composition window holding down shift to get your hands. I'm gonna hit the R key to pull up rotation for both. You good? No problem at all. And that helped me find both of those layers. And I just closed the other twirl downs near it just so I just see these two. All right. Here we go. I'm going to. This should, I'm gonna split these layers, just to be on the safe side. Because you have some rotation happening before it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I did too. So, yeah, all right, we're on the same page. Edit, split layer, or command shift D. So we split them, and we're both happy with that. 
So with those two splits, I'm just gonna hit R. All right, here we go. We're gonna do the expression on one and then copy and paste onto the other hand, all right? So we hold down Alt or Option and we click our rotate watch and we type in our expression. Wiggle, double click to autocomplete. And I think we did four comma, I think it was like 18. I'm gonna click out, hit the space bar. That's not jazz hand enough. I think it was four comma 80. Let's try that. I know it was at least four. Let's try eight. So we want it really, you know, jazz hand. That's a little better. Like, so I'm gonna try six. 70. Is that a little better? Or is that, that might be too much. Let's try 650. Yeah, because he's, he's moving the hand too much. That's a bit better, right? Yes. So, you know, let's, let's just even try 640, just for the fun of it. Yeah, it's a bit better. So I'm going to copy this, Command C, go to this layer, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option when I click the stopwatch, and I'm going to paste it. So now both the hands are doing that, OK? So next, I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to send you this file again. So now we're going to add our slider control. The slider controller is going to be in an adjustment layer because it's invisible, OK? So it's just an invisible layer that we're throwing the slider controller into. It's right there. I'll call this slider controller. I hit the enter key to rename it. And in the effects, we're going to type in slider to get the slider controller. And I'm going to drag that into my adjustment and hit save. You good? Yeah, no problem. So the adjustment layer. And I'll get to you, Chris, in a second. Oh, did you need me? Oh, okay, you were just waving. I'm waving back. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> so layer, new adjustment layer. That's how I got the adjustment layer, okay? Once I had it in my timeline, I hit enter to rename it. I called it slider controller, so I know what it's doing, okay? Then in my effects, I typed in slider and I dragged the slider controller onto my adjustment layer. All right. All right. Yeah, you do that and then you let me know when you're ready. The way this works, with my slider controller layer selected, I'm going to hit the E key for ex um, effect, okay? There's my slider. I'm going to twirl down and get my slider stopwatch. Let me know when you got that far. Okay. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. Just a reminder, this is the trans, the uh, parent pick whip, you know, the parent one layer to another, this one right here. Yeah. This is the properties pick whip, the pick whip properties together. Like when we did the rotation parented to the position. So when something moved, it rotated. Yeah. And this is the expression pick whip down by the expression field. The first number, the number of times per second, we're going to select that number, just the first number. Gra yeah, grab our expression pick whip and drag it up to the word slider. And then we're going to click out of the expression field. Yeah, the hand that has the expression rotate on it. So for the other hand, I'm going to select that first number, the number of times per second, use the expression pick whip right here and drag it up to the word slider, and then click out of my expression field. So just a reminder, when you're pick whipping, you're pick, pick whipping to the word slider by the stopwatch, and it has to be the expression pick whip right here. When you hover over, it says expression. Do you see that? Expression pick whip. That's how you know what each one of these does. You just hover over and you'll see it. All right, so here's the final step. When you've got a slider controller and your, your expressions are parented to it, Zero is off, one is on, okay? So I'm gonna start at zero and click the stopwatch and move forward to where I want it to start 
the expression. So I'm going to change my thing to one and go as long as I want. Let's say a couple seconds. And I'm going to click the empty diamond button to make a duplicate keyframe of the one before it. So I'm going zero, one, one, and then set it back to zero at the end. So the hands will start to shake for a bit, and then they'll stop when I want them to, like that. All right, cool. Zero to one, then one to zero. All right, excellent. Uh, so mine went zero, one, one, zero. So it's, you know, fade on, expression, fade off. You can set it to whatever time you want, but you want to go from zero to one, then one to zero. Got it? Okay, so this is working under my teacher account. So on YouTube, if anybody wants to see this, this is how you get royalty-free music off YouTube. So if you've got your YouTube account, you know, from Google, so I click on my, you know, thing. This is my teacher account. I click on YouTube Studio. Uh, yeah, 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 free channel, whatever. Oh, no, wait, I don't, ooh, didn't want to do that. Oh, well, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, welcome to YouTube Studio. I hope you're happy. Happy, Sam, was it worth it? Now I've got this burner YouTube account with, all right. So I clicked here, I went to YouTube Studio, audio library down here in the side panel. Yeah, 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 close. So what I want to show you all is this first thing, this upside down triangle click that, I always go attribution not required. So that means you don't have to say, hey, this is, you know, my cool, awesome song by the awesome, cool guys. You don't have to give them any attributions. So that's my first thing. There's a tab for sound effects. You don't have a lot, but you can search, you know, like, uh, that's just searching across my channel. So you could look in here, see what you find. Not a whole lot, like I said. Yeah. So that's where you get your sound effects. And then music is over here. Like so we said, attribution not required. You could also look by duration or mood. You know, you say mood, I want to do dark. Cinematic. Is there a cinematic? There usually is a cinematic. We'll be dark. Yeah. Um, genre. Here we go. Cinematic. So I've got attribution not required. Genre. Cinematic. Mood. Dark. Fly. And then I've got all these to choose from. You know. Uh, so let's pretend. I like that song. You know, which I don't, but let's pretend I do. You just click the word download over here and you can download it, then you can throw it in to your video. Oh, that's fascinating. Tell me more about you. <laughs> sound effects are tough to find. You better you'd be better Googling free sound effects than looking for free sound effects on YouTube. Free music, there's lots of free music, not a lot of free sound effects. Foley work, like those sound effects, Foley work, that's that's more of a, a niche field. So they're really protective of their stuff because they're just sitting there all day with expensive microphones, banging things together, which is what the cool kids do. 40, that's the amount. So I'm going to change that 40 to 20. And here I'm going to change it to 20 as well. And then make sure you click out and then hit the space bar to preview it and see if that's better. 
Yeah, see that 20 looks a lot better on mine. For the jazz hands. And I want to show you something. My ending, I moved those very far apart. So it's zero, 100. I mean, zero, one, one, zero. So it's a long fade out. So watch what happens here. Get some of that more subtle, slow shaking stops like that that adds another randomness to it you know what i mean yeah. so it's got that long feed out you get a completely different animation based off of that like that you know yeah. all right anyone else have any questions while i'm here let's go back here so you're saying you want a vignette around this very, yeah, I would say very subtle just because you have so much going on. So, if you want, layer new, solid. And I'll just call it vignette. Okay, we're going to use a mask because, you know, it's got more flexibility. So you got to have your layer selected. Let's pretend this is where we want it. Under add, I'm going to change it to subtract. So here I hit F, feather it out. Then I'm going to twirl down my mask again and change the expansion to push it further away. So I get the look I want. And then it's just T for transparency, making whatever amount you want. It's a small, soft, subtle vignette on it. That help? Yes. No problem. And also while we're here, lab time's about pushing things. Let's see background, know about that. Here's the word studios, okay? Yeah. Well, there's a light shining down on it, so I want to fake some shading to it. Let's, I think there's an old effect for perspective shadow, but I'm also gonna try and fake one. Drop shadow, shadow and highlight. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, well, yeah, you could put, you could put shapes there, but I'm looking for something even faster than that. Um, yeah, that's just going to do all the text. Um, so I'm going to duplicate that text, command D, put it below. I'm going to put my anchor point at the middle. Hold down command to snap it. I'm going to non-uniformly scale it down like that. See? Starting like that. And I'm going to give it a fill of black. Change the color right up here. But, wait, we're not done yet. This is lab time. I put a fill effect on it. I'm going to throw a Gaussian blur on it. Crank it up a little bit. Soften it. Add some more uh, dimension to it. See? And then I could even, if I wanted to, adjust the scaling even more. Get an even more extreme shadow. See the difference between those? Yeah. And then you could say, okay, well, what if I flipped this shadow by right-clicking, transform, 
flip vertical, and then I just reposition it with the P key. So it's matching the direction of the light. That looks even better. And check this out. So this is where this appears. It's going to appear because you already did a layer cut when that other layer pops up. Okay, have a great night, Shalia. Thank you. Nope. See you Thursday. So that's just showing you how just paying attention to those little things can help push it even more. Like that, that really anchors it. Especially when you got a light above it. You know what I mean? Think about the entirety of the scene. And while we're doing that. I'm going to go to the word busy beagle right here. And I'm going to throw CC light sweep on it. And what I'm going to do is change the direction. I'm going to solo that so I can see it better. I'm going to, let's see, where's that? down here and I'm going to try and get it hitting the right way uh, that's what all right there we go there's the beam now I can see what's going on here now it's hitting the top right about here reason I did that is look at the difference between that and that. And now do you see how the light is interacting with the letters? And I could even change the color to match that better. Now we're anchoring everything into the scene. Can even make it more subtle if I want. Break this up a little bit. There you go. That really sells it a bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. A little bit of light, a little bit of shadow really goes a long way. With your light sweep? Yeah. Well, check out my settings real quick. First, I changed the direction of it. You gotta change the direction of it. I did 270 degrees. And additionally, let's see, where's my thing at? Right here, see how I put it right near the top? So it's gotta be near the top, running straight across the top, and then I did my width 31, sweep intensity 56, edge intensity 95, edge thickness 5.9. Then I made the color a little bit more like the one you have in your scene, just to help blend it in a little better. So that's the beauty of doing little by little each week. You do these little tweaks to really push it. Like that's what's gonna get you noticed in the job market. Or are you paying attention to how things interact, how they sit in the scene? What should be happening to them? Reflection, shadow, light. These little things really help get you noticed. Very nice art style of this, by the way. Yep. Yeah. 
thing is. I was just wondering how I can get the um, Grand Fred app on here. I don't, I don't know how to do it to the school. Oh, are you on the Wi Fi? Yeah. your login information okay. for it. Oh, that's it? Okay. It's, um, I thought you had to go to the school website or something. No, 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 no. Um, oh, that, that, that's fine if, if you've already got your thing, like who you got it to and all that. That's where you're doing your sign in. Oh, you, okay. you do this, and then there's going to be a section on things you can and, and can't download. One of the things you're going to want to do is download the Creative Cloud app where you can manage your apps. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It's been a yeah. while since I actually get one. Yeah, like uh, I always get that warning, like can't manage your Creative Cloud or whatever. It's it's there's nothing I can do about it because of my account. It's just fixed. 